Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, here we have part two. I am, uh, at this point, we have we have the whole character fleshed out. Now it's just a question of adding little details and design and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, if you've watched the, um, the Demons tutorial, um, I spoke a lot about the type of graphic line, the type of graphic uh, design elements that I bring into it. In his particular case, um, he's a very different character he, as far as his personality. He's a gentle pensive uh, healing character, right? Because um, number one's idea was to either do something more of a war type character or a healer. And I like the healer idea for Trees because it's kind of how I, I always associate them with that, having that kind of a personality. Um, in this particular case, I want to add a design uh, which is more uh, rounded, soft forms, elegant forms and stuff like that. So I was thinking of in, uh, bringing some in nice uh, white flowers and mag magnolia, mo eh, magnolia flowers into it. Okay, uh, you'll also notice if you just look closely, notice that I reversed his antennas. I realized I put them in the wrong place. I made him put them in, like whiskers, you know, like in the in Indiana Jones film. You know, you're digging in the wrong place. Well, I was painting in the wrong place, so uh, that's got to get fixed. So here, I'm going to delete the last version. This is my butterfly over here. I'm just going to lock it up so that I don't accidentally paint on it. I'm going to copy this guy and I'll work on this one here. So let's just get the basic round brush. I'm using the same basic round brush for the entire piece. And here I'm going to start adding in some surface details, some edges. Some... Oh yes, I changed my sound scheme so that that ding isn't as brutally offensive too. But you might get annoyed with that. Unfortunately I have to keep it on because I need to know if there's something not working properly, right? So I want to add some kind of surface details. Now when I have, often when I add surface details like this, I try to take into the into account um, the surface direction, right? I'm thinking about the three-dimensional form. So I very often when I'm adding in details like this, I will add them in following that form so that it helps accentuate his three-dimensional form. It's another way you can kind of sell that idea. And I'm looking at my reference, my reference over here, like that. And notice I also have my magnolia picture over there as a reference as well. Just to have it there whenever I feel like I'm kind of struggling to find some kind of a, ideas for shapes or, you know, I'm feeling that something isn't quite looking right. I glance over it. Sometimes I don't even like the whole last part of the video I wasn't even looking over. And at this point, this is very relaxed. On my forum, on the Demon's Forum, uh, one of the viewers was asking, how do you keep your enthusiasm up when you're working on a piece of artwork for a long time? And my answer to him was, well, at least the way it works for me, something that I find uh, is very often the case is, um, it, uh, how you keep up your enthusiasm, how you keep your energy up and work on a piece of artwork for a long time. Like a lot of people were asking me about King's Harem. I remember uh, I was speaking with Tyler Edlin and um, people were, I, I was asking him at one point, I was like, how, you know, he had spent three weeks working on an environment design. It was like, I remember I was saying, how do you keep your energy up for something like that? That's pretty hardcore stuff, you know? Uh, especially when you look at the, the level of detail that he puts into his work as well, into his environment pieces. Um, for me, environment pieces are a lot more exhausting, uh, namely because it's just something I don't do as often. I mean, I can do it, but I'm, I don't, you know, I'm not to the same level as Tyler by any stretch of the imagination. But, um, you know, I ask him how he, how he, he keeps his focus on it. And he said, I, I don't know, I just kind of meditate in it. And for me, I can relate to that because um, uh, I can relate to that when I'm working on character pieces, especially. You know, I, I find I can really meditate and just get lost in it. But a lot of that also has to do with how mentally prepared you are. Um, if you prepare yourself for a piece of artwork and you tell yourself, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to give myself one hour to complete this piece of artwork. Then once I start hitting an hour and a half and two hours, I start getting impatient, right? I start going, oh, this is taking a long time, you know? Uh, in the case of King's Harem, however, I said, I don't care if this takes me five years to complete, you know? I was kind of finding my inspiration more from classical painters and stuff where they could spend, you know, you know, Leonardo da Vinci, you know, the Mona Lisa had taken well over a decade to paint. Um, 
Does that mean he was working only on the Mona Lisa for that long? No, it doesn't mean that. Uh, he was flipping back and forth between things, but to him it was about he, he had mentally prepared himself for, for, a, for a huge piece of artwork. He wasn't mentally preparing himself for just, you know, to do a speed painting, a 20 minute speed painting, you know, that kind of thing. So when you prepare yourself for something big like that, um, when you prepare yourself for something big like that, then, then when it takes longer to paint, it doesn't bother you because you're already mentally prepared for something much bigger, you know? You're already ready for it emotionally. That's a big deal. You know? And the other question he asked was, uh, what else was he asking? Um, you actually have it right here next to me. Oh yeah, just the frustration uh, when you're getting frustrated with a piece of artwork. Uh, you get frustrated and it's not working the way you want it to, and you just say, ah, screw it. I just, you know. I can't do this. I'm, I suck. I'm no good. Which, by the way, every single artist on earth gets that, feels that regularly. I feel that most often when I'm not entirely confident that I'm going in the right direction with a piece of artwork. You know, when I'm, um, when I'm kind of feel like I'm putting more energy into repairing or salvaging a piece of artwork rather than, um, rather than just adding detail. And the trick I have for that is actually something I remember hearing. Uh, somebody had really uh, kind of answered that question to a certain degree really well was an artist I really like, uh, Marco Bucci, uh, B-U-C-C-I. He's, uh, he's got his own YouTube channel and stuff. It's also linked in, if you check out the uh, um, the, the tutorial forums or any of the, uh, the actual uh, video pages for any of the series, you'll notice that I just updated it today to have all the interviews it's before it was still set to all of the... Um, not the interviews, but actual tutorials, because originally it was set to interviews. And Marco Bucci's on that list. You can go and check him out. I really like him. You know, he's a really good artist. And uh, he was talking about how he kind of, you could see, kind of take the lazy approach with art, where you kind of, you you just have a very non-committal attitude. You're very much like, you know, you you kind of have this attitude where, you know, you could throw it out if you want to. It's not a big deal. You know, you're focused. And you're concentrated, but you're keeping your imagination and you're keeping the, the pressure level down. You're not sitting there going, oh, I got to get this right. I got to get this right. I got to get this right. It's going to, it's got to look perfect. If you have that attitude, that stress level is going to, in my opinion, at least in my work, I find it overpowers my imagination. And I really just want to think loosely. And to me, uh, one of the big turning points as far as, you know, how I approached my own artwork and how my artwork affected me emotionally was, um, when I started treating painting more like sculpting rather than painting. If you treat it more like sculpting, then a sculptor doesn't just slap a glob of paint on the, on, you know, on the table, uh, slap a glob of clay, uh, clay on the table and expect it to be a perfect sculpture. They mold it into what they want, right? And when you approach a painting the same way, you look at a form and if that form isn't perfect, you mold it, you skew it, you stretch it, you cut pieces out, you slap pieces on, you know? Exactly the same way I did with this guy, with, uh, with this treant character. And you're not focused on whether or not it looks right. You're focused on what do I need to change to make it look right. So you're not sitting there thinking, I'm a failure, I'm a failure all the time. You're just thinking, okay, it still needs to be moved around. It's still not right yet right? If you can change your focus like that, you'll find that it really makes a huge difference uh, in terms of just how you approach it and how you feel while you're painting. That stress level really goes down because you're not sitting there, you know, with the, with the you know, feeling like you've got an audience of 500 people sitting there waiting for you to screw up, you know? You're not going to screw up. That's not how artwork works. You know, when you're painting, it's, 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 uh, it's a process. It's not uh, an. It's you don't just execute a painting. It's you know like you watch those little cartoons and stuff like that, or TV shows where somebody will wave their magic paintbrush and that painting will just magically appear. You know, it's not. That's not the real world. That's fantasy, right? As an artist, I, I really encourage you. If you find you run into that kind of a stumble, you know, if you kind of run into that frustration when you find yourself looking at your work saying, "Oh, this sucks. This looks like crap." Stop treating it like a painting. Start treating it more like a sculpture that just needs to be molded into something better, you know? And and when you do that, man, it 
all of a sudden you're just all of a sudden you can turn anything into something good and also the way you paint the way you create forms the way you uh, the way you shape out your characters takes on a much more organic process you know like I'm looking at this guy right now I'm looking at him as a piece of clay you know I'm looking at him as as a slab of clay that I just need to mold around and right now I'm take I'm imagining taking a little a little um, knife or a little tool and stuff like that and I'm just moving this clay around right that's why it kind of gives you can when you're looking at it it almost it looks like clay if you've ever worked with clay before it kind of has a very clay feel to it that's kind of how I'm treating it right that's why it gives it that nice that nice look to it you know so I encourage you to do the same thing just just have a very light heart about your work and don't get all worked up when things don't work right you know it's it's uh, that kind of stress is pointless and it, if you're stressed out like that it generally means that you're not focused on the right thing you know you're just not focused in it. You're, you're putting your focus in the wrong place you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself um, because you're focused on on success rather than process you're focused on focused on the end result rather than the fact that you know everything you create will always be about just molding moving around treating it like a sculpture right just change your headspace and you'll find that that frustration really just fades away you know you don't get frustrated at all you learn to start just relax that's where you can really start relaxing and really start getting in your work and next thing you know you've spent three days working on a piece of artwork and it's looking great and, and you didn't even look at the clock right one of the things they say one of the most important skills for any artist to learn um, apart from technique and stuff like that is patience it's all about patience just take your time you know move things around if it doesn't if you do if you're the type of person who has a very short attention span you know then work on something and when you get tired of it when it's you start to feel like you're just kind of like trudging through it um, and your heart's not in it anymore put it down you know you can put it down and change your focus onto something else for a little while watch a bit of TV play a game or something like that for for an hour or so and then come back and try it again when you're fresh or work on another painting you know sometimes for me just working on another painting will break the monotony of something I'm working on especially if I'm working on something that I'm not particularly having a great time with you know sometimes I work you know I have contracts and stuff like that where I'm working on stuff that I'm I'm doing it to pay the bills type of thing but my heart's really not in it well you know put it down for a bit come back you know and when you have a fresh attitude then you can come back have a fresh look at it and spot your mistakes and switch them around and you're also thinking while you're not painting too right painting sorry about the ding no I'm not gonna apologize anymore because it's a pleasant ding um, uh, yeah you just uh, just don't worry you'll be fine see so look at that one ding and I completely lose my trail of thought so now I'm just trying to I want to add some kind of facial details to it here actually let me get my reference up so I can see what's going on there um, I want to add some facial detail at the same time I don't want to just add it for the sake of adding it like I, I like what this guy's looking like so far I don't want to I don't feel like I really need to go crazy with with little fine detail because what it'll end up making them look like is too jagged and you know and rough I want to keep that softness about them there's something nice and smooth and and pleasant to the eye going on right now with him that I could over refine and if I over refine it I feel I feel like it harshen it a little bit too much you know that's why I'm just noodling around very gently just adding a few little things here and there just for the sake of refinement see I'm not going to do the close-up test like this either generally speaking you're only going to see the character about like that right so the details that I'm adding need to be clear enough so that they can be seen from about this size that's what it's going to look like on my gallery if this was for a poster or something like that then I would have to really come in close and add some really sharp detail hmm. look something across his eye little 
bit of a highlight to this little crack. See if I can put some kind of a etching into him or some crack or something like that. I'm not totally sure if this is where I want it to go. Yes. Careful not to change his expression too much because I like this expression. It's a sweetness, and if I go too crazy with detail, then I can, I can kind of break that, and I don't want to do that.
really fun Halloween tonight too. It's a beautiful night for Halloween. It really is kind of like the perfect temperature. And there's a lot of people out. Last year, I think it was actually raining or something like that. So trick or treating was actually kind of really dead. And in my area, it was kind of like almost nobody that was actually, there were no kids that came. So it was really a, it was really a downer and stuff. I mean, we took our kids out, but it was like everybody's bundled up and cold and kids got up kind of frustrated at a certain point, but today was really fun. My little one-year-old guy was dressed like a little blue monster. He looked like a little a little blue fuzzy Solly. My girl was dressed as a really cool vampire. Four-year-old, that is. That's really awesome. My 13-year-old daughter had a, had a sleepover party, Halloween sleepover party. So it was pretty awesome. It was really fun though, and there was, I'm gonna actually, I've actually posted some really cool pictures on Facebook. Some people really went, this year, really went all out with decorations and stuff, and there was one in particular that I just posted that's a, <laughs> it was really creepy as hell. I had this like swing with this puppet, this robotic puppet girl that's with these glowing eyes, with these very Tim Burton y looking thing, you know, swinging back and forth. And the actual thing had this like audio recording of like this little girl's voice that was singing like, la, 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 la. It was like creepy as hell. It was so cool. Everybody was freaking out over it. They even had a smoke machine and music playing and, you know, a coffin out in the front where it was somebody inside that would jump out at people and stuff. It was really awesome. I had a good time. It was a good Halloween this year. I really enjoyed it. My kids had a blast. As a parent, of course, you have to monitor the food that they eat, right? You gotta make sure you get to check all the food. Certain foods are not appropriate for little kids. So, of course, as a responsible father, you know, mom and dad have to make sure to consume those har those harmful, you know, those harmful foods so that, you know, the kids don't get, you know, they don't eat inappropriate foods and stuff like that. So I did my duty tonight as a father, making sure to eat all the food that she wasn't allowed to eat just because I love them and I'm looking out for their best interest. Right? Now, I'm just going to jump down to this hand here because it's been bugging me. I haven't really put any work into this. You'll notice I do that a lot. I, I, I essentially jump from one thing to the next all the time. I kind of like to paint the whole painting at the same time. That's the type of guy who likes to, you know, I don't just paint one little area. I like to focus on the whole painting, so that's why you notice me jumping back and forth a lot. It's just the way I paint. To each their own. Everybody's got their own little thing. It looks a little bit almost like dinosaur claws or something like that. I'm gonna have to. I don't want to create forms like that too much. A little bit is fine, you know. I mean, he's, he doesn't look like a mean character or anything like that, but still, you know, just, I want to be conscious of creating forms design-wise. Like the actual graphic lines that I'm using are, are aren't frightening or sinister in any which way. I want to create a very friendly, approachable character. But I mean, you can still have a little bit of dark in there, just to give them a little bit of a quirkiness, make them make them look interesting. You, know? you can also create characters that look kind of creepy, but have a warm soul. You know, look at Tim Burton's work; is a perfect example of that kind of stuff.
notice the level of contrast I have here is far subtler than that in the face because I want the face to be the main area of focus and I don't want to spend all of my energy adding too much detail to these areas because it can take away from the take away from the main the main area of focus which is his face his face in the hand that's holding the, the, the little moth Another thing to mention regarding, uh, uh, you know, like just keeping your your enthusiasm up and your and working in a way that's uh, sorry about that, um, working in a way that's less uh, stressful is I try to establish what this painting's going to be in the first five minutes, you know, uh, and work very loosely, and you can you can tell if something's going in the right direction or not rather fairly quickly, you know. You don't need to spend an hour on it to know that you're going in the right direction. You can you can figure that out fairly fast, right? And um, if I f generally the general rule is if I feel like if I'm, if I'm going in the right direction in the first ten minutes or so, five ten minutes, generally speaking, I'm if I if I stay true to what I, to my original idea, then I should be good, you know. And I generally at that point, you know, it's a very good way to get right to the point very quickly. Uh, so that a you can abandon something if you know that it's not working. <coughs> my, my 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 lady's got that cough, right? As everybody does. But um, and then she tries to hold it back and tries not to cough, which only makes it worse. See, she's doing it right now. Let it out, girl. <laughs> she's desperately trying not to cough out loud. You're very sweet, Jen, but you don't have to do that. Let him rip. Well, no, don't let it rip. That's that's the wrong expression. <coughs> there you go. try to create some of these rounded forms here on his torso as well. I like to show it's kind of like vines that are moving in and out, kind of intertwining with each other. By the way, you, you probably noticed this is one of the first videos that I posted up on my uh, on my forum that is painted in real time, right? And that, if you're listening, Barbara, that's for you. Uh, my friend uh, Barbara from Brazil, Barbara Roma. She's uh, we've been friends. She just let me know yesterday. We've actually been we've we've known each other now for three years, and uh, that's pretty awesome. So this is uh, I'm painting a real time video for our three year online friendship anniversary. This one's to you. Now I think I'm going to uh, push and pull a few valleys around. I was watching. Uh, I had mentioned in the last video that Tyler had uh, Tyler Edlin, uh, Tyler Edlin had uh, uh, mentioned to me. He said you got to go check out. Uh, no, not this. You got to go check out uh, uh, Anthony Jones's interview on Level Up. 
I was like, yeah, 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 sure, I'll go check it out. I hadn't seen his work in a long time, and I really loved it. I love what he's doing now. It's beautiful stuff. And he was doing something while he was doing that demo that I really liked, just how he pushes and pulls values around. It's kind of what's, it's, it's very much inspiring, this piece, watching his work is kind of, it's reflecting in the way I'm approaching this uh, this painting a lot. Because it's something, like his style is something that really resonates with me. It's something I can really relate to. I feel it's something I can I can understand how he works. You know what I mean? Uh, and he's his work now compared to what I saw years ago. I mean, it's, there's a lot of evidence this guy's really been you know just kicking it into high gear. It's uh, over the last like he's this guy really loves his trade. You know, and it really shows. And I liked how he was playing with values and stuff like that to create little kind of hot spots of light and stuff like that. So it's kind of inspiring myself on that grab some of those ideas. And also to create a nice value range because when you're working in value uh, you need to have a nice a nice range of contrast going on right so I'm just throwing in a couple of curves layers just so it, it preserves my all of my form. I'm gonna add some darks and lights to help push those focal points a little bit more. Yeah, I definitely needed that. This thing about having his, his limbs being a little bit darker than everything else. Just have that lighter value just around his face to help create a nice warmth around here. Before, after. Oh yeah, definitely much nicer. Thanks, Anthony, if you're watching. Awesome video. I linked it, by the way. I linked his uh, his interview. You can uh, uh, I, actually in the tutorial section. Just check it out in the, on the sidebar, on the right sidebar of the tutorial section. It should be there, so you can uh, you'll see what I'm referring to. So see, I'm, I'm looking at the values here, but I'm also comparing it to the values of these branches in the background, so I don't want it to compete, because that'll start messing around with the depth a little bit. has shape dynamics. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this original guy before, after, before, after. I'm going to get rid of the before, copy this guy, and keep working. I'm going to use my Shape Dynamics brush because I want to start creating some finer detail. Let's make sure I got the right brush here. There we go, yeah. Looks good. Establish these fine shapes first before I start bringing in the fine brush. Remember, always start with a fat brush, and as you slowly work your way through the painting, go into thinner and thinner brushes to get fine 
finer and finer detail. If you start with a thin brush, if you start with this little sketch brush, it's going to keep you tight and you want to stay loose. You always want to stay loose. Even in animation, it's the same deal when you're doing uh, your original line work, when you're doing sketches for a line work. One of the best tips I ever got was uh, draw with a soft tipped pencil. Don't sharpen your pencils. Keep them, keep them unsharpened, and it'll keep your hand moving looser, help you create some nice dramatic lines. Let's get a more pronounced collarbone here. Oh, did I? Let's pronounce a little bit more of that collarbone here. something else worth checking it out. Uh, uh, Jason Seiler just put out his Adobe Max um, talk that he put up. Really cool too. Really worth checking out. I like him too. He's a very, for the, for the, the incredible talent this guy's got, he's really humble. You know, he's a, he's a really down to earth. You can tell he's a really down to earth guy. You can tell he's the type of guy, if you saw him at a Comic Con or something like that, he'd be, a, he'd be really sociable. You know, I don't see him as being some kind of a elitist or douchebag or anything like that. He's got a cool attitude. Same thing for Anthony Jones. He's really, uh, these guys are really down to earth, which I like. It's something I like about artists, you know. Generally, there's just, there's not a lot of elitist. I mean, you get your elitists everywhere you go, right? But I find you find more elitist type people in the gaming industry than you do in concept art and illustration. It's just, I'm not typecasting people at all. It's just what my observations from what I've seen through my own experiences. Yeah. One of the things, one of my big pet peeves I'm always telling people about, especially being a teacher, right? Is the type of people that, you know, that have a tendency to start sentences with, with uh, start sentences with, with things like, like I said, blah, 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 blah. I hate people who say that. It pisses me off. Like I said, and it's usually what, what they're like I said is usually followed by something extremely complicated and intimidating. <laughs> you know, like oh yeah, uh, how do I log on to the uh, server here? And it's like your first day there, you know. <sighs> and then they'll give you some one-word answer, right? So, uh, <sighs> forty-two. And of course, that doesn't answer your question. So you're like, oh. Um, 42 what? And then they roll their eyes. Then they give you the big side. The, okay. Um, all right. You have to log on to the Xbox server and enter 42 into the uh, domain 23xxb, as you should know, right? That's very straightforward stuff. And you're sitting there going, okay, I'm not following anything you're saying right now, you know? You know, no matter what you say, they'll always try to make you feel stupid for asking. I'm very anti that type of thing. Probably because I've been at the receiving end of it enough times. Yeah. Especially when you have kids, you know, and you have little kids. It, one of the things I love about about just being a father, one of the people that very often ask me, you know, how do you work like this all the time, and how you have three kids and everything like that, and my answer to them is they're a part of it. You know, they're they're in on the game with me. They're a part of my artwork. They're a big inspiration in what I get from parenthood. You know, just being learning the patience of you know, you know, taking care of kids and and teaching them patiently and 
understanding that you know everything that they're learning they're learning for the first time and stuff like that so just have a cool attitude about that and all of that really translates into artwork quite a bit one of the movies i love is uh, the last samurai one of the things i loved about it one something i really walked away with from that film was um um where they're describing how what's up sue ah good night uh my lady's going to bed um, and describing how uh, how the samurai, everything in the samurai's life revolves around the art of war, right? From how they cook to how they love to their relationships to, you know, to, to how they farm to just every daily ritual they have is all wrapped around their, their trade craft. And that so completely applies to artwork as well, you know? Being an artist isn't just about sitting down and being able to paint pretty pictures. It's about living it constantly having your eyes open i remember um uh, in the making of roger rabbit uh, richard williams the the lead animator the director for who framed roger rabbit uh, also the guy who wrote the animator survival kit if you're in animation you know this guy will you know he's 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 uh he's out there right and he was discre- he was talking about just being an animator and one of the things he said also resonated with me he said like he said cartoonists and animators are like children in the sense that they never lose their ability to observe, you know, as an artist, you always have, you're constantly, you always have your eyes open in wonder at the world around you. And the more you learn, like when you learn about color and you learn about value, and every time you learn a new thing, all of a sudden you walk outside and the whole, you're just sitting there nerding out over just earth, you know, <laughs> you're walking down through the city and, you know, I live in Montreal and stuff like that. And I, you know, you spent your whole life looking at concrete going, oh, God, more concrete. You know? But when you start to see color, all of a sudden car- concrete becomes exciting. A dirty laneway becomes a work of art, you know, and that kind of stuff always resonated with me. It really is part of every day of your life. You're, you're always an artist. Everything you do is, is as an artist and, and simply observing the world around you is a huge part of your learning process right it's a huge part of your learning process you're um you're observing the world around you you're you're building that visual library that everybody talks about so much you know everybody that's that seems to be the the catchphrase in today's day and age it's that visual library thing well it's true you're 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 constantly sucking in and absorbing information around you and visuals around you and whether or not you remember everything in photographic detail you are keeping yourself in that artistic headspace so when you sit down at your when you sit down at your computer or you sit down in front of your canvas you're far more you know in tune to that type of lifestyle i like i'm a big believer in the law of attraction right when you want something bad enough you'll make it happen, right? And there's no better example of the law of attraction than kids, than young kids. You know, young kids are taught to settle down, calm down. You know, like Seinfeld says, you know, when you're young, you, you know, when you're young, it's, everything is up. When you're an adult, everything is down, you know? You wanna grow up, you know, you wanna sit up, you wanna look up. When you're an adult, it's settle down, calm down, you know? And it's, it's like that, you know, with kids, when they want something, they'll fight for it. You know, my, my four-year-old daughter or my one-year-old son or my 13-year-old, in any case, you know, when they want something, they'll, they'll badger you. They don't, they're willing to piss you off. They're willing to get on your nerves and repeat something 25 times until they get it. But you know what? A good 40% of the time, they get it. Dad buckles every now and then, and he lets them have what they want, you know? You know within reason, of course. But uh, you know what I mean? And I respect that in kids. And that's something that for me as a parent and as an artist, you know, I, I don't try to, you know, control their behavior and their desires too much. I don't want them to cross that line of politeness, you know. I don't want them to become, you know, spoiled and bratty. But at the same time, I want them to, to learn that if you want something bad enough, then you, you know, you, 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 
you rattle the you rattle the cage a little bit you know you rattle the cage you you, you can push dad a bit you can push if you if you want something bad enough then you can push you know if it's something that's not good for you that's a different story but you know what i mean you don't want to i personally don't feel you want to suppress that quality too much you have to handle that's something that i really find i have to handle very carefully with my kids I want I want my my girls to grow up with you know with a sense of strength and integrity and you know and and that that knowledge that if you push hard enough you'll get what you want. You know I respect that in kids and adults I find could use a little bit more of that and very often you know you look at people who who are huge successes a perfect example somebody who who's inspired so many people in this world Steve Jobs right he's that type of guy I see him as a guy who kind of didn't completely grow up. <laughs> You know what I mean? He has a bit of that child, childlike, you know, I won't take no for an answer. I don't care if I piss you off. Gimme, gimme, gimme type of attitude. And there's something in there to be admired. There's something to learn from that. You know, if you're too gentle and too courteous to people, you know, when it comes to your real goals and desires, stuff that, you know, stuff that, you know, is really going to make a difference for your life. You know what? Piss people off once in a while. You know, call that director back one too many times. Don't panic and say, oh, well, I just... I just called, you know, two days ago. I don't want to be too pushy. Don't be too pushy, you know. You don't want to go on. You don't want to be blacklisted by somebody. But at the same time, you know what? Let people know that that this is important to you. I really believe that. Any time I've really given a little extra push in something, it came around eventually. You know, it always came around. That's something that I that I I try not to adhere. I, I try not to adhere to to being over oversensitive to other people's sensitivity levels. It's another thing about getting older. You know, when you're old when you're an old an old codger, you don't give a shit. Uh, you're I'm bothering you because I'm listening to my music too loud. Oh, my heart's broken. You'll get over it. Because people do get over it. But some people just make a big deal out of everything. We get all worked up out of all kinds of shit. I'm like, your problem, not mine. Yeah, it's starting to come together, isn't it? This is fun. I'm having a lot of fun working on this. It's cool too. Um, I, you know, it's brand new form and stuff like that. So you know, it's it's like a school. Starting a new project is like going to a school dance. At the beginning, everybody, all the girls are sitting on one side of the of the gym, and all the boys are sitting at the other side of the gym, and nobody wants to be that first to get up. And then one person, one brave soul, gets up and walks across, does the walk of shame, you know, and reaches out to a girl and says, "Would you like to dance?" And she says, "Okay." And they dance together, and they do that very awkward hands on hips, hands on shoulders, box step with a three foot gap between them, you know, looking back and forth trying desperately not to make eye contact with the person in front of them. And then as soon as they do that, then everybody else jumps in, you know. And, you know, this forum, this this whole project that I'm working on is a perfect example of that. This is, uh, this was me just saying, hey, I've got, a, I've got a really, you know, an idea I'm really passionate about. I really want to get out there and, and offer something cool. I want to be a part of the growth of this really amazing industry that we work in and I said let's take it to the next step man let's go let's give it a shot you know what do I got to lose worst case scenario it falls I fall on my face and and I'm devastated and my wife leaves me and my children call me a loser oh god what did I get myself into no seriously the, the worst case scenario is you know if it doesn't kick off I learn something in turn I learn what does not work and I try again and and after about 20 years, I developed the re reputation of that person who just never got it. That he had so much potential guy. <laughs> I got a lot of that when I was in elementary school. He has a lot, Adam has a lot of potential. If he applies himself more, you know, he might grow up to be a world famous mathematician. I'm sad that that dream didn't work out for me. I was always that kid, literally, that kid who always had his head in the clouds 
And when I mean literally, I was always I was always staring at the clouds when I was at school because I love clouds. I'm gonna tell you. It's kind of ironic that all of the things that I was uh, that I was uh, corrected for the most as a kid, you know, and then when I was in high school and stuff. You know, always looking at, always, always looking, gazing outside during class, or you played too many video games. All of these things when I was a kid. I was a big video game freak growing up. I still am to a certain degree, but I know I've learned how to pace myself. But as irony would have it, I ended up working in video games as an artist. So there's the law of attraction for you, right? Here, I'll tell you another story. I remember I went on this, when Metroid came out, I remember I went on this, like, kind of like this eight-hour Metroid blitz. I just sat there and just, I didn't, I didn't even, I don't even think, I think I took six breaths in that eight hours. I just sat there and just numb-faced and played, 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 played. My mother walked in my room at a certain point. She goes, you're still on this game? I was like, oh, I hasn't been that long. You've been on this all day. And she got so pissed off. She took my Nintendo and she says, Adam, I'm doing this for your own good. And she grabbed my Nintendo. You can you can ask her. You know, I, I, none of these stories I'm telling you were made up. She took my Nintendo. She ripped it out of the wall. Didn't pull it. She ripped it. She was trying. My mother wanted to make a statement. Ripped it out of the wall. Told her to follow her into the kitchen. She took my Nintendo. She threw it in the garbage, which was mostly full, so it was kind of sitting on top of the, all the the garbage in the in the garbage. Took a hammer and smashed the shit out of it, and said, "Go outside." I went, "Okay." So I immediately went outside and went straight to my friend's house and played video games at his house. Don't tell her I told you that though. Shit, she's probably gonna watch this video too. Yeah, but my mom smashed the shit out of my Nintendo. And to be honest with you, I wasn't even mad at her. I was kind of sitting there, kind of like, you know what? You're doing the right thing. <laughs> I'm way too hooked on this thing. I can honestly say that that same exact addiction exists in 85% of anybody who works in the video game industry. I mean, it's just relentless video game playing. It's crazy stuff. That's why it's one of the things that kind of turned me off of playing too hard and just being that type of kid was witnessing other people do it a lot worse than I was. And it's kind of like uh, somebody who has any kind of a, an addictive problem. They're like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I don't have, an, I'm not addicted. I'm not addicted. And then they look and they see somebody who's, who's pretty much just as bad off as they are. And all of a sudden it dawns on them. Holy shit. That's what I look like. You know, that's the life I'm living. Yeesh. And it kind of hits home when you see that. And that was kind of a turning point for me. But I never stopped watching cartoons. And I never stopped nerding out over cool films and art and all that stuff. I definitely still have an addiction, but this addiction, this addiction is a healthy one. As long as I remember to get out and exercise and spend time with my family too. Okay, that's starting to come along, isn't it? Looks good. You see, at this point, it's just really just noodling around. This is fun for me. This is there's. I'm not stressed out. I'm just sitting here chatting with you and just adding details where details need be. All that figuring out all happened. I was. I already knew where this that this painting was going to go in this direction in the first ten minutes. I already looked at it. And I said, okay, this is going to work. You know, keep recording.
if you're paying close attention, if you're wondering, if you're kind of trying to understand what I'm doing right now, I'm focusing on hard and soft edges. That's a very big part of what's going on. If you're not yet completely familiar with what how hard and soft edges work, I suggest you you research it. There's a lot of tutorials online that kind of explain that kind of so, that kind of stuff. And uh, again, I'm going to refer to Marco Bucci, yeah, that artist, because I remember a while ago he has a nice, uh, it's a really good. He's a teacher in real life too, so he really knows how to explain things well. And he has he had a really good tutorial on hard edges, soft edges, and lost edges. So I suggest you go check that out as well. I linked his. Uh, his, his whole YouTube page, so you have access to all of his videos there. Have a look before, after. Looking sharp. All right, a little bit more value in there. I can push it even a bit further.
just using the soft airbrush for this, just, some little, just pushing those little bits of contrast at that extra bit of visual depth. I very often find that the, the number one thing that's missing in a lot of piece in, in a lot of artwork, whenever you feel your artwork doesn't really, it do, really doesn't kind of, it's missing that extra punch. It's you can always push contrast more, you know, within reason. You got to do it sensibly. But is a little bit of value in those cracks to show that light source. Give me a second cape. Here I'm going to get my little fine brush and I'm going to just to bring out those little pools of light in corners. Little ever touch of specularity, but I'm only going to be applying this to the the hot spot, which is right here.
trying to bring out a few little very, very, very subtle uh, kind of surface variations in the skin, or at least the surfaces, just on the surface, just to bring out some little bumps and, you know, little uneven, random uneven areas, just to, so it's not a perfectly smooth surface. He is a, he is a tree after all, right? So it's important that I catch a little bit of, a little bit of surface variation. See what I mean by meditative? I don't think I've said anything in the last 20 minutes. See, when I'm pre-recording, I'm, you know, I'm talking over a time-lapsed video, but in the case where I'm doing this, I'm, this is, my brain just goes into a, a yoga mode, you know? It kind of reminds me, I haven't done yoga in a long time. A friend of mine is a yoga instructor, and she actually kind of got me into it. And I, I was doing it for a little while, and I kind of enjoyed it. It felt good. When I was uh, working in Ottawa, the family I was staying with, they ended up becoming uh, really good friends of mine. Like We ended up becoming, getting really close. We still are. And uh, the woman I'm, I was staying with, the, the mother, who owned the uh, horse ranch, a pretty awesome place to to spend your days, I might add. Really enjoyed it there. And uh, her daughter was into yoga and stuff like that, and got her mother and her other sister into yoga. And so one day they dragged my sorry ass down to the yoga thing, and I, I did uh, hot yoga for the first time. <laughs> Let me tell you, I, I'm good at sweating. You know, um, anybody who knows me from the salsa community, you know, when I go out dancing and stuff like that, people know that you know Adam Adam can sweat. He knows how to sweat, you know. Like, there's all these Cubans and you know Puerto Ricans that are dancing around. And they got turtlenecks and you know made of burlap, you know. And they're freaking dancing their ass off and they're dry as a bone. And there's this, there's Adam, you know, dancing and he's in this like little wife beater and a and a pair of jeans and he's just sweating like crazy. <laughs> yeah. So like, imagine me in hot yoga. You know, I was like, oh god, I was just passing out at a certain point. That was pretty messed up stuff. Did it feel good? Uh, I guess. I sure did de detox quite well, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, it definitely felt good. I wasn't a big fan of the one of the instructors slash administrators that when I walk in, there's this guy in his freaking underwear, you know, with his legs crossed in the in the Buddha position on his office chair, you know. Hi, Adam. Welcome. Welcome to yoga. <laughs> I'm like, people like you actually exist? <laughs> All right, then. Fair enough. So what would you like to do today? Stretch. That's nice. Stretching's very good. Yeah, that's why I came to do it, but... Oh, that's great. I like you. Yeah? You didn't even fucking know me yet. No, I'm kidding. I'm not such an asshole. He's a nice guy. Just put some pants on. Trying to make eye contact with another guy when he's sitting there, leg, legs crossed, you know, on a chair in a pair of little tighties. And you don't know the guy? Good luck. It's not that easy. Of course, that would also explain there were a lot more girls at yoga than the guys. And some of the some of the people you can tell, like the pros, the those those yoga girls that you know they've been doing it for. They've been doing it for like, you know, for five years and like super, super nimble and like they'll do, they do a side stretch, you know, and then somebody turns to me and says, you have to stretch to the side. I said, I am stretching to the side. <laughs> I look in the mirror, I'm like standing perfectly straight, you know, and there's a girl in front of me. I remember there's this one girl who's doing, this, she's doing the stretch, kind of like the show off of the class. There's always a show off, you know, the one who always brings the apple to the teacher type of thing, you know. And I swear to God, her body was bent sideways at a perfect 90 degree angle. I was like, okay, that shit's just creepy, man. She's going to hurt herself if she keeps that shit up. You know, that's just, that's just wrong. And there I am, you know, like, 
Brian Reagan, stand-up comedian Brian Reagan. You'll, I hope you're starting to realize at this point that I watch a lot of stand-up comedy. One of my favorite stand-up comedians is Brian Reagan. And he does this whole thing where, you know, he goes to the gym for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> He's talking about <laughs> going to yoga class. Okay. Now take your, take your leg, take your foot and throw it around your neck like a scarf and breathe. He's <laughs> like, I'm not breathing. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of how I felt when I was doing hot yoga. Yeah. I'm not the most flexible guy in here. careful when you're working on specularity like I'm doing right now because you can go a little too far with it and end up making it look kind of like pulled flesh and stuff like that and make it look a little bit overworked you know pushing and pulling highlights and shadows is, is an act of subtlety you, know, you work very gently and subtly you don't you don't go crazy with it you add it where it need be you try to stay a little bit loose with it you don't get too tight with it you know if I start coming in I do all these little tight highlights like that I could, you know, I could overwork it. So it's coming in gently, moving it around, that kind of stuff. No, I don't want this. I work very gently. I'm working with a very light touch right now. I even set my hardness up. You know, like the default setting for hardness is set in the middle like uh, halfway between hard and soft and I usually I bump it up one notch like the middle plus one just so I have that little extra bit of gentleness with my brush stroke but you'll notice my brush is always at 100% I did used to paint like that if you look at some of my tutorials back in the day like when I was working on old mother you and stuff like that what a piece that gave me a lot of a lot of the experience I got from doing that painting years ago is definitely applying to how I'm painting these branches right now. I'm painting this character. But I had a tendency to work more with opacity jitter. I usually had it set to pen pressure. So I was, you know, constantly playing with that as a technique that I used very often. It worked at the time, but I find that now uh, I prefer feeling my brush stroke. I like feeling the brush stroke in my painting. And when you're working with an opacity that's too low, you risk kind of making it look a little bit too smooth and airbrushed and I like to keep that texture because the texture gives a piece of artwork a little bit more energy you know keeps that energy flowing and stuff just to show those little variations in brush strokes how much more I'm going to go to about here So I'm kind of pulling it in, tucking it in like that a little bit, I'm trying to create a little bit of that pull feeling where the bark is pulling in. But if I went any more specular than this, I would start turning this into skin. I'm almost flirting a little too close to, this, to skin with what I'm doing right now in terms of specularity. So I'm really being very careful to play it down. If need be, you know, if I did push it too hard, I could always just take the specularity down a little bit like that. But, but it's okay, I'll keep going with one because it's giving that little bit of contrast and it's helping it pop from the whites in the background. Without it, you'll see that it kind of creates a bit too much of a gray silhouette and you lose a bit of that information just by adding that bit of highlight. I'm actually bringing out that, that surface information nicely, the three-dimensional form.
there's something interesting I can talk about. So actually, I was just having a conversation with a friend of mine about this last week. Uh, she was asking me, she was saying to me, you know, you make a, you know, you, I talk about, you know, I very often teaching my students and stuff like that uh, about, you know, making a living as an artist and, you know, and, and learning how to, um, you know, learning how to market yourself and all of that stuff, all of these different things, and blah, 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 right? And one of my students said to me, it was a very smart question too, she kind of hit me, and it was good timing with this question, she said, you do a lot of free stuff online, I notice, you know, you do a lot of free stuff. You're, it's kind of like you're giving away, a lot of people have, a lot of people who, who teach and, you know, do stuff online, most people you see who, who are online are generally very generous with their time and stuff like that, but, you know, people ask me, well, Adam, you're a teacher and you're trying to make a living out of teaching and all of this stuff, but you're kind of giving away all your secrets online. Like what I'm doing right now, like I'm essentially, I'm watching you, you're watching me paint, right? And I'm explaining my process and you're like, but Adam, you're giving away your secrets. This is, isn't this, this how you want to make a living? You know, if you give it away for free, then who's going to want to buy it? And that's actually, a, it's, it's a bit of a paranoia that a lot of people have, I find. It's the kind of fear that a lot of people have. Um, if you've ever taught before, the first thing you learn is that there are no two artists that work the same way. I have taught hundreds and hundreds of students, you know, from every imaginable level, artistic skill level and everything like that. I've taught hundreds of people and no two artists have ever been the same, regardless of how many tutorials people have watched of mine or of others, you know, because I'm, I'm one of many artists out there that share their work online, you know. Um, when it comes to teaching, you know, you can learn the fundamentals anywhere. You know, the fundamentals of painting you can learn absolutely anywhere. That's 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 kind of a default, and it, that that information is available. But what most students come to me for, apart from just learning technical skills, you know, how to use certain softwares and different painting techniques and yada yada and all this different stuff, is um, uh, finding a sense of personal expression and refining what they do, right? Teaching is not about you doing what I do. I'm teaching, I'm showing you exactly what I do and how I do it, but by you copying me or imitating me, it's a very good way to learn, which is why I'm showing it to you, but you know, I'm the only Adam Duff on earth, at least the only Adam Duff that does my stuff, and you know, and, and uh, Sam Nielsen is the only Sam Nielsen, and, and you know, and Bobby Chu is the only Bobby Chu, and Jason Seiler is the only Jason. Uh, Jason Seiler is the only Jason Seiler. There's only one person that the, you you can't take on the brain of somebody else, the imagination of somebody else, right? So when you teach, you're actually I don't teach people how to do what I do. I teach people how to do what they do better, right? So for me, there's no I have no fears about giving away secrets, you know, how you, how you take what I'm, you can take exactly what I'm showing you right now, and you're going to apply it to a completely different type of artwork. You're going to go in a completely different direction with it, right? Um, but when people approach, when I, when I teach or mentor or whatever the case might be, I'm teaching people how to make their voice shine, not make my voice shine better through them. That's not teaching. You know, that's trying to make carbon copies of myself. That's kind of a, that's called being a bad teacher. <laughs> you know, so it's, 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 a bit, it's a bit of a fear. Like sometimes people are afraid to share, share personal information because they feel it's like their secret, you know? Hey, listen, man, I've shared every, if you call, if that was the case, I've shared every secret I've ever known. But does that mean that somebody's, I'm going to show it to somebody and overnight they're going to be able to do what I do better? No, of course not, because they're not me. And, and I discourage students from trying to do anything like I do. You know, like I look at people, my, one of my things I'm most passionate about when it comes to teaching is my ability to look at somebody and see exactly where they're going with it. Like understand their quality, know the types of things that they would find the most inspiring and help push them in that direction. That's what teaching is about, you know. It's about, I've been doing this for such a long time that I... I, my visual library doesn't only include uh, things I've seen. 
but it includes having experimented with hundreds and hundreds of different styles and different venues and different things. So when somebody comes to me for help, when somebody comes to me for, for teaching skills or for mentoring or teaching in school, you know, I'm bridging the gap between them and their learning very quickly so that they can get in touch with who they are as artists very quickly and understand what the process is about because that's what that you know and the only way you can do that is through a one-on-one -on -one interaction with that other person it's something that can only happen between you and that person and what i teach one person very often very often won't even apply to somebody else you know it won't even apply you can watch it you can get certain tips out of it but is it really going to make you the best that you can be probably not it's only when in on me studying your work and getting to know your work on an intimate level and really getting to understand what you're about that i can effectively teach you and that's what teaching's about you know the last thing in the world i want to do is is encourage this world to be you know a bunch of copycats of each other that's not the type of artist i am and that's not the type of artist i try to bring out in others either so if you're hesitant or worried about you know um you're worried about you know putting yourself out there and sharing your knowledge because you're afraid you're going to kind of give away all that hard work to other people you're not giving anything away to other people you know um but one thing i would say is it's important to distinguish the difference between um the, distinguish the difference between being a good artist and being a good teacher because those two those are two different things you know not everybody who's a great artist can necessarily teach very well because teaching takes is, is a is a specific skill right i'm just going to add a little bit of highlight here because i want to balance it around i don't want to just have everything here and have everything up flat so i'm just adding an, another second layer of hot spot in there but teaching is an art in and of itself you know, it's it's something you really do have to have a passion for um, for recognizing and just that whole to me one of the biggest highs I get from being a teacher is when I'm talking with a student and I'm sharing ideas with a student and they go, Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, you know, getting that reaction. I love that reaction from students. It's like, yeah. That's exactly, that's, I've been struggling with that so much. You totally nailed it, you know, and when I, when I know I've hit a nerve and I know that I've kind of like, I might have said something or tapped onto something that answers a question that might have been mauling around in their head for like years, I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Because I know as an artist myself that there's certain things that I, I understand what we struggle through. I understand the things that we all kind of try to hide and deek around and, and fence around with for years and years and years. And, and just to, to me, the learning process is, is learning processes. You work, you work, you work, and you might feel like nothing's happening, nothing's happening, nothing's happening. And then all of a sudden you go click and it clicks. And when it clicks, it's not just one little thing that clicks and you make that little baby step forward. It's like 18 things click simultaneously because all of those things that you thought were failures were little pieces of a puzzle, but the puzzle didn't make any sense until you put that last piece in. You know, and that really is what it's like from my experience. It's that last little piece of the puzzle, and then all of a sudden you go, oh, a whole new world, a new fantastic point of view. Don't worry, I'm not going to break into song. I make a shitty Aladdin. But you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's it's listening. To, teaching is about listening to somebody and going, okay, I understand where you're going with this. You keep Teaching is more about listening than shooting your mouth off, you know? It's about because you're not going to be an effective teacher unless you're very good at understanding people. If you listen hard enough, people will tell you what they need. You know, it totally reminds me of this TED conference I remember seeing a little while back where it, it, it was it didn't come out that long ago. Where, she, where it says uh, if you really want to help, listen. You know, if you really want to help, listen. And it was talking to this person who was who was talking about how how he like worked in. Um, like providing assistance to to third world countries and stuff like that, like Africa and India and all that, and 
it's a lot of people in Western culture believe that kind of have this belief that you know we'll come in and we'll save you, we'll teach you how things are, how, how things, how to make things better by doing things like we do, and that doesn't what what works for you in your culture might not necessarily work in in another, you know. If you listen to them, they'll tell you what they've been living this. You know, artists have been living this. They've been living their struggle. They know exactly what they need. They just might not, might not know where to find that key to solve it, right? And as a good teacher, you take all of that experience you have, but you keep your mouth shut about it, you know, and you listen and you listen and you listen. And then they, then they give you that keyword and they say, they say this and you go, I got it. I know what it is. And then you go, check this out. And you show it to them and you go, that's it. And all of that. And at that point, man, you know, it's like, you know, and you've been working, you know, imagine playing video games and you've been spending like six months trying to get this piece of armor and then you get it and like you just completely have a, you know, just like a nerd fit. And you freak out and start screaming, oh my God, oh my God. Like you just won a million dollars in the lottery. That's that kind of reaction you get from students too. It's pretty awesome. And it's like, they just, they just, reach that next echelon it's always a super awesome feeling but that's what teaching is about it's like for me sitting here showing you how to paint what i'm doing is i'm talking to you you're I'm, I'm keeping your mind fresh i'm showing you a different perspective i'm you know you're watching how much attention i i focus on quality and rendering and how i do your little tips and tricks oh he does this with the lighting he's doing this with the shading and and shapes and blah, blah, blah. I know what you're watching when you're looking at my paintings. I know what you're focused on, you know? Um, that's why I don't always have to explain everything. You know, I could talk about other things while I'm teaching stuff, you know? Sometimes the philosophy is a little bit more beneficial than me explaining what you're already freaking looking at, right? Do I want to add too many highlights there? I think I need to take that down a little bit. You know what I mean? Um, but that's why I walk, that's why I talk you through certain things. So I know what you're looking for in this painting. I know what you're, you're there's certain things that you're kind of trying, you're watching this and you're saying, ah, oh, I, I, there's certain things. How, how does he do this or why is he doing that and everything like that. So those are the things I like to, those are the things I like to walk you through a little bit. Is that helping or hurting? I'm not sure. Okay, you know what? I think we're good for that. I'm gonna add just a little little bit of depth, a little bit of contrast in these branches over here because I find they're a little lacking. And then I'm going to do those flower petals to finish this all up and call it a day. Pretty fun day too. I had fun today. Shit, I got a lot done today. Damn. Forum and the painting. and I just put out two, two, two new editions of, uh, I finally got out to, to, uh, two new, uh, Chapters for demons and went trick or treating with my kids. Had pizza for dinner. Frozen pizza. I didn't order it. It's been a good day, man. I'm really, I'm stoked. Let's break up that line on a little too smooth, too tubular. I'm not a big fan of that. I want to keep those shapes feeling very, very loose and organic. La Flora. All right. Now I'm wondering. I know I want to do it, but I want to make sure I'm doing it in the right spot. How's that look? Better before or after? I'm just going to make sure before I flatten that out. A little less specular. No, I think that looks good. All right. We're good. And then the power goes out, and I forgot to save, so let me pause and save. All right, so... Uh, Sample something from here. Let me just think where I want these flowers to be.
Oh dear. Did I do that? Thank goodness. I have enough, enough undos. Let me keep this a bit small. Little random petal that sticks out. A little, you know, when you're doing hair, have those little loose hairs sticking out will always give it a little bit more credible. Same thing applies to when you're doing any kind of, you know, plants and stuff like that. Anything natural, grass or flowers, you just have a little petal or two that are going off in a random direction can help really sell it. You want to keep it this perfect little geometric form. I'm wondering if those are the type of flowers I want. I, think I want those petals to be a little bit more. Let's see if I can just lasso to it. Keeps them simpler, a little bit more romantic. can play with it. Thinking about the weight on these flowers, right? If the one hang sideways like this, I'm thinking about the gravity that's kind of pulling them down, adding a little weight to it. It's important. Not so, not so crammed. These ones here, keep that in silhouette. That would be nicer. Yeah, I think that's a little nicer. Actually, you know what? A tiny little bit lighter. Just to suggest that they're they're not quite as opaque as the uh, as the branch it's sitting on. Okay. Give it a bit of light, a little bit.
bit more into shadow. I'm just going to have a couple that catch the light. I think that'd be nicer. Partially in shadow. It's going to be at that halfway point in terms of value. Now, are these flowers helping or hurting? last little thing to do and that is going to be to add a, some little color and light accents to this piece but uh, um, very very subtle this I because if I if I push too far into color I'm going to start demanding that this become a color piece and because I put the energy that I put into this is as a value piece I'm going to keep it as monochromatic as I can but just adding little accents to give a little bit of energy to the piece it'll just to enhance it's basically my I'm really focused more on enhancing the black and white piece so I'm just going to come in with a, color, a couple of color adjustment layers and a little bit of magenta perhaps a little red In the darker areas, cooler tones for that. The hot spot's going to be cool. How's that for contradiction for me? I'm doing it loosely, though. I'm not like sticking strict to exactly what they're I'm just kind of going with the way it feels Get, you know, adding a little taking a little away Very delicate though, you know, I'm not going like this, I'm not coloring my piece. I'm working very, very gently with this. So subtle that variation is. I'm really 
really trying very carefully just to give that little, little bit of color harmony to give it a little vibration of color while really truly respecting the fact that this is a grayscale painting before here before and after see that just giving a little bit of flavor that's it Let's see if i can throw in a little bit some kind of a light Hmm. Oh, there you go. Pin looks good. Okay. I think pin light might be like, you know, I'll go a little green or bluer with it because my light won't my a subtle accent of color. Hmm. Maybe pin light isn't the way to go. Let me see. I'll keep experimenting. The overlay. Then I can just boost it. It's not doing it. I swear that I'm hiding some important detail here. I know I'm noodling around with such a silly little thing right now, but I don't want to. I don't want to, you know, add some detail that just doesn't do any, doesn't contribute anything to the painting in a positive way.
customized color balance layer. Just throw a little bit of splash, a little more splash of color here. I keep thinking of aliens for some reason. I like the concept art for aliens when I look at this. It has that kind of feel to it a bit. It's just that the whole way I'm going about painting this. I don't always paint like this. As you do, of course, I'm sure you've seen my work before. little butterfly here, a little uh, Luna Moth. So I'm going to give him, I'm actually not going to give him, um, generally Luna Moths are more green, green yellow. I'm going to give him a little bit more yellow than green. harmonize with the rest of the piece. It must be hard watching me do this right now. It must be falling asleep on me. It's just a very, very subtle accent. All right. I'm going to play that very subtle accent down ever so slightly. See? So if you look before, oops, if you look before, purely black and white, and then that little bit of, and that little accent, almost even invisible. Is this helping? No. Fuck it. All right. So there you go. We're done. So thanks for watching. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Again, uh, thank you hugely uh, to Mirwan for, for this awesome suggestion. Uh, of course, and if you have any other suggestions, uh, feel free to throw them in the forum. Um, you can either, I'm going to be creating a new section for this tutorial, which is going to be uh, forum suggestions, essentially. It's not going to be in the same section as demons, you just you can access it from the main tutorial page. And there you can uh, feel free to uh, comment on this particular piece, ask questions on it, or offer suggestions for newer pieces. I'm always checking out the form, so I'll, I'll, I'll definitely uh, see it if you post it. All right. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, remember, if you haven't already, you can subscribe to my mailing list. Uh, just go to on either my, you go to adamduff.com, you can go to my index page or to the tutorial pages, and you'll, you'll see a pop-up at the top to uh, subscribe. All right. And remember, no spamming or any of that crap. Right? It's just for the good stuff, just for the video tutorials and stuff. So, uh, all right. So, thanks, everybody. Take care.